Hello and welcome. Um, thank you all for registering to join our webinar today regarding English learning auto exiting. Um, my name is Ann Hansconnect. I work for CEPI. I am a senior data collections analyst who works with the MSDS and SRM collections and have for the eight years I've been with CEPI been heavily involved with the EL uh, data that we collect and as you all know it's been a struggle and we've been working really really hard to improve the data we collect and to make it easier for everybody to exit students that should be exited things like that um, for the last three years we have been working on thinking about how can we make this easier and we think we might have a solution for that which is what this webinar is going to be all about but in the meantime, I'm going to let Kelly from MDE introduce herself um, and everybody else that may be participating in this webinar as a presenter, etc. Kelly. Hi, good morning everyone. This is Kelly Alvarez. I'm the English learner consultant for MDE um, and super excited to have everyone here today. Um, I would say that this is this is kind of a culmination of a lot of work for the last three years that we've been going through. It's it's really a tribute to our collaborative efforts um, at the department and with CEPI. Um, and we our team has really gone from kind of a notion three years ago to being a highly effective uh, machine. And a lot of times our collaborative efforts are not visible uh, to the field, but we're hoping that through this presentation and through this process, you'll see that um, there have been significant efforts um, put in place to make this exiting situation better for our kids and hopefully um, make it better for all involved. Um, so we have uh, we've been working hard on our communication and today we had 833 participants register for our our event. Uh, that just is kind of a visible tribute to the communication and and collaboration that we've been working on um, across the departments. Um, we have some really awesome people helping us in the background today. Uh, Stephanie Holmes Webster and Joan Jackson are two of the people from the special populations unit that are here. Uh, Stephanie will be running the question and answer. So you may submit a question um, in the at the bottom bar. You'll see many of your uh, options for turning on your camera or or unmuting yourself are locked down, but you will see that you have an opportunity to as, as submit a question and Stephanie will be accumulating those and helping us with that at the end of our presentation and John Jackson is running the software for us today. Um, so we're so excited to have them helping us out. I'd like to turn it over to Jen Paul to say hi. Great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jen Paul. I'm the English learner and accessibility assessment specialist. I'm in the assessment office at the Michigan Department of Education and I oversee the WIDA assessment for our state. So I'm here to support the fine folks that have been all a part of this project and we're excited to have you here today. And back to you. OK, welcome back. Um, Joan, if you can advance to the next slide for me, please. Today, this is our agenda. We're going to be kind of taking a look at the items that we're covering. It, the primary focus of our time will outline the process that you as districts should follow to effectively process EL exits in the 1920 school year and beyond. We do recognize that with the coronavirus and, and schools closing and the complications of all of that and te getting test results back that this year's going to be still a little bit different than most years, but we'll try and cover that adequately too in this presentation. Uh, next. OK, on this next slide. Auto exit. Currently, there's a lot of systems that we use at the state between CEPI and MDE that collect the various data regarding English learners. So we started thinking, why not have the systems 
talk to one another so that we can help expedite the exits and make it a lot easier because we know there's been complications with exiting students for many, many, many years from a variety of different standpoints. So basically we came up with an idea that we will ex we will get from the secure site OEA, excuse me, OEAA secure site an extract of all the proficient students and that will be imported and applied at, to the students UIC in MSDS to get them exited. Um, essentially that same WIDA student data file that you can log in and download from OEAA will be provided securely to MSDS at, at, a, at a statewide level versus a per district level. So the EL auto exit process will is, is the process that we've developed to um, exit proficient English learners from EL identification automatically. This means that if an EL student took all components of WIDA access for ELLs or the WIDA alternative access in the current school year and they meet the new exit criteria outlined in the state's entrance and exit protocol, CEPI will automatically exit them. Uh, the state EL exit date is a new field in student history and it will be applied to the last certified collection the student was reported with the EL component during the current school year. Usually this will be the end of year collection of the school year your student tested it. It will not appear in your actual collection, like if you logged into MSDS and looked at the components and stuff like that, you won't see it in that actual collection as a characteristic but it will be in the student history tied to that collection that it was associated with. Uh, next slide, please. OK, so this is kind of a sample of once if you do a student search in MSDS and you go to a specific collection and it will bring in the student details, it gives you all kinds of information. As you can see, we have added a field state EL exit date. I, it's in red for right now, but that's <laughs> it won't be within the actual system. It will just be normal black font, etc. Um, and it, it, to the right of that will still be EL exit date because the manual EL exit date is still available for certain situations. Next. OK, in terms of this, what students are going to be automatically exited? This is pretty, pretty, pretty simple here. Um, anybody in grades three through 12 that meets the following, that meets the exit criteria, they have to have a WIDA proficient score for ELLs of 4.8 or higher, or in the WIDA alternate access, an overall score of P2. So any of those kids, we're going to automatically take care of for you um, and get them exited, which decreases the amount of exits you may still need to do. Next. <laughs> OK, um, we've had some question. Well, what happens if we the district, the kids scores proficient, but we really don't feel that they should be exited from services as of yet? If you think they still need EL services after the state exits them proficient um, for testing proficient on the WIDA, MDE is suggesting that you support the students through the multi-tiered system of support um, before immediately re-entering them as EL within MSDS. After a reasonable time period, if you still have continued concern and feel that they should be re-identified as EL, you can re-enter them in, M in the next MSDS general collection or via an SRM, but you will be required to put in a e EL re-entry date in characteristic field, and it has to be after the state EL exit date. Pretty simple on that aspect. Next. <laughs> okay, this is where it gets a little interesting. There are still students that may need to be exited manually. We recognize that. So we have kept that EL exit date field within the English learner component so that districts can still do this. 
we don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of usage for it, for it because it's going to be a very small population of students that might meet this criteria. One of those criteria are, kid, the, are the children that are in K2. They may test proficient on the WIDA. However, um, the district can exit them if they feel they've attained sufficient levels of English to be successful in general education settings without additional supports. They should, you should look very carefully at the students in those grades as the linguistic demands of early elementary may not be as rigorous as those in later elementary. Typically, that's why the third grade is the cutoff because they feel that at that stage, children have a better grasp, <laughs> literary grasp of English by third grade versus kindergarten or second. Um, the next group that could potentially be manually exited are typ typically going to be migrant students, but they may not be. They may be other students that move in from out of state that took the WIDA in another state, have their WIDA results, and we can see that yes, they did took test proficient. You can submit a manual exit for them. Um, more often than not, this would be like, let's say the kid, the student took the WIDA in February in another state, they moved here in April. When those results come through or whatever, you would still be able to, to submit an exit date for them because if you have proof that they tested, you can do that. Whether it is in that end of year, whether it is most likely not in the end of year, at least especially this year because of test results, but in that SRM window we've used in prior years for exits in the summer. This will also cover down the road if a student moves in after the SRM window, in theory, you could put that EL exit date still from the prior school year in your fall collection for those particular students that moved into the district after it was too late to report them in our systems. OK, and the last bullet there, students that were not reported in MSDS as English learner during the current year but still took the WIDA assessments and tested proficient. This really shouldn't happen too much in the future um, or even this year, especially since um, MDE's English Learner Office, Kelly has been making a lot of phone calls and emails and OEAA has reached out to districts to make sure that if a student actually took the WIDA test this year during this current school year, that they, that they need to be reported with the EL component at least once without an exit in this school year so that the auto exit can attach to it. Um, why this is put in there is because we've seen in the past we've had students that tested proficiently in prior years and the district may have tried to do the SRM exit and things were handled incorrectly either by the district or on our end in terms of our guidance. We've continued to make strides with how to do that better and better. So they're like, well, they're, they, they tested proficient. We exited them, but MSDS still sees them as English learner for whatever reason because of as of dates and such. So after that, the district chooses not to submit the EL component for these students and ignores one of our certification rules, 100.29, that basically is a warning that says, hey, this student was reported as EL before without an exit, you either need to exit them or enter the EL component. However, um, this is also trying to cover the scenario so tests don't get invalidated and so that we can actually get kids exited. Um, if a student is not reported in the current school year technically and they still take a WIDA and are proficient, OEA normally would invalidate those scores and not so we wouldn't even apply the exit and they'd still be a expected to tax, test next year. I know it's really complicated and COVID-19 and WIDA results are making it even more fun this year. <laughs> I will say that much. All right, next slide please. And actually I'm going to turn this back over to Kelly now because she's going to cover a few other uh, some things on the other side for a few. OK, great. So um, 
This is just a list of the general processes that each, each district will need to implement to ensure that the exits are processed um, successfully. Um, and that includes generating the list of students in your district. And I'll, I mean, I'm going to run through each of these actually uh, in just a second. Next slide. So the first thing to do is to generate a list of students in your district. This is a simple pull download of, um, of a list from your local SIS, and you want to get all the possible students that are EL on this list to start with. Next. After that, um, we need to identify the students that are actually going to meet the exit criteria for this year. As you may have heard, there are new exit criteria. The first one is the 4.8 overall uh, on the WIDA access, no domains and no local reading. So just 4.8 um, on the WIDA access. And then if they took the WIDA alternate access, again, just as, as a reminder, P2 will be the exit criteria, and this is brand new this year uh, for the WIDA alternate access. Both of those scores will, um, will qualify for the auto exit as long as the student has been identified as EL in the current school year um, in MSDS. So not newly identified, but just re-identified or maybe newly identified. Okay, so there's two options for figuring out which of those kids uh, met these criteria. Um, there's either the WIDA student roster report or there's the WIDA student data file. Both of those links there take you to instructions on kind of on how to do that if you're not familiar. Um, but the WIDA student roster report breaks down the students uh, by grade level and by school and then um, you can check to see which ones made the 4.8 and the P2. The same thing, uh, similar idea in the WIDA student data file. So, um, so those are two ways. So, so far you have a list of all of your kids and then you're going to cross-reference that list with the list of the students that tested and tested proficient. Okay, next. Um, there is a caveat, and as Anne mentioned already, if students tested out of state, um, the, if they took the WIDA access or WIDA alternate access in another state, if they come with proof, this is rare, but we put it in just in case, um, let's say a student was a Michigan student before they were identified as EL, they go to another state, they test, they test proficient, they come back, they're still EL in Michigan. And so if students come in with proof that they have met the outlined criteria in the EAP entrance and exit protocol, um, then you can also process an exit for these students, but this would be a manual exit. This would not be part of the, because they didn't test in our state, we wouldn't have access to that data. So we can't include them in, a, um, in, an, in the auto exit. Okay. And then next, um, so the next piece is really getting the package ready. And this is the program person's job to get the package ready and get ready to share it with uh, the, the pupil accountant side of the house. So um, finalizing the list, getting the students inform in information entered into uh, your local SIS. So the one thing that we can't do is control your local SIS. You already know that. So what we need you to do is to take that list and exit the students from your local SIS so that your, your data stays clean and your information is clear. You want to put that EL exit date on or before June 30th um, of, of the current school year and then notify the pupil accountant that that's all ready to go uh, so that they can start working their magic on the other side. All right, I am going to pass it back to Anne. You're muted, Anne. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I want to add one last thing that um, what Kelly was just touching upon in terms of, of your local sis. 
we do know that with PowerSchool specifically, when you put in an EL exit date, it asks you if you want to exit them from EL, and it gives you a choice of yes or no. If you actually say yes at that point, when MS, when you when they get ready to extract and upload it to MSDS, it does not load all those records that you have said yes exit from because it's already exited it from your local sys, so it's not being pulled forward. Just a word of caution there, depending on your sys. But I do know that has happened with PowerSchool. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, what does a district need to do in in MSDS? Um, your pupil accounting staff will take the EL exit information for the students that need to be manually exited and upload a file into MSDS um, to get them exited. If, if your local sys doesn't allow you to separate out just those versus the one that the states are going to automatically exit, if you upload all your EL students that need exiting, even if they tested proficient and we're going to do it, that's OK. It won't hurt anything in the system. You'll just see two exit dates in the student history. Um, once it's everything's up there, uh, should uh, the pupil accountant and the program office people should verify that the information was successfully uploaded to MSDS and that the students show the exit information. Next. OK, so and I kind of touched upon this in the last slide. You really should only have to upload the students that that may need an, a manual exit. Again, if you do upload everybody, it doesn't hurt anything from our end. It's just a little bit more work to tip technically on your end. This year with the end of year collection. Um, we do know that you're not going to have WIDA results back in time to use the end of year to make any EL exits for grades 3 through 11. Well, 3 through 10, possibly, mostly 11. If you have EL students that are in 12th grade that are actually graduating, if you submit the graduate exit record, that will exit them from EL. That's really the only ones we expect to see this year in the end of year um, with exit dates. Anything else? will be either those that small population that you might want to do manual exits for. And the rest would be the ones we're going to take care of. Next slide. And yes, this is Stephanie. I didn't want it to have participants wait until the to very last slide, but they wanted to see if you can repeat what you said about power school in regards to a manual exit. OK, in PowerSchool, I, I, I have learned this from districts in the last several years when they update in the local in, in PowerSchool that these students are exiting EL and they put the EL exit date in. PowerSchool asks, do you want to exit them from EL? Yes or no? My understanding is if you actually click yes at that moment, when the data gets extracted from PowerSchool to upload into MSDS, PowerSchool already considers them exited, so it won't upload those records into MSDS. So you're not, it's only exiting in from your local system. It's not exiting them through the state. So just be careful of that, that it may be you actually say no <laughs> right then and, and or, and, and then, and then, go back and say yes. If they're, they're your proficient ones, because you still need to, regardless of whether the state exits or not, you still need to update your local sys student information systems. So if you go in and you're proficient, the ones that are the 4.8 or the P2, and you say yes on those ones, that's great because then it won't upload those ones when it comes time. Um, it will only do the ones that you may need the manual exit. Does that make a little more sense? OK, I'm going to. I haven't gotten any more posts, so maybe it has. <laughs> OK, and obviously, you know, we're going to provide links and information for contact and. 
I am available for answering any questions about the MSDS side of things after this as well. Um, so back to the slide in terms of verifying with the pupil accountant that the EL exit information was successfully loaded. Typically what we recommend is once it goes up into MSDS into those SRM summer records and it's all certain those students are certified that the pupil accountant does a download of the collection or of those student extracts those students saves it as an Excel file and you can launch excuse me um, saves it um, to your desktop and then open Excel and you can open up that file and then you can filter for the EL exit date to ensure that they all have the date and stuff like that and so that it shows that yes. Um, the download will only include the manual exits, the district reports in MSDS. OK, I'm going to I'm going to move us on to the next slide here. Resources, we like resources. Um, Typically, most of this information we have been talking about is in our 1920 EL exiting reporting guidelines document that is found at the link included. The 2021 MSDS collections detail manual has been updated with a little bit of information about EL auto exits. Because it's all back end and most of it is not stuff you have to do, there's not a lot in the manual per se. Um, I had hoped we would be able to get one more link added to this as we are in the process of publishing our 2021 collection component matrix for the business rules. As we have had to update and change a lot of business rules <laughs> um, for the better, finally, we think, um, that will help make sure that dates are the right kind of dates, that that you'll get an error if if this tested was if the student tested and exited and was exited proficient, there will be a message that pops up saying, hey, this student tested proficient and was exited by the state. If you think they need EL, re-enter them. So that's kind of that also a fail safe. So if you don't update your local sys when it comes time for next year and if it's still showing that the student is EL and it goes up there, it's going to get that error. So you'll go, oh, OK, now I need to update my local sys. But we have a whole bunch of changes in business rules that will take care of that as well. 